Hello, and welcome to Game Theory. I'm Professor Naomi Utgoff of the United States Naval Academy. In this video, we'll define static games of incomplete information, provide an interpretation of types, define strategies, and introduce Bayesian Nash equilibrium. We'll begin by exploring static games of incomplete information and contrasting them with other types of games. Let's pay our last visit to the classification of non-cooperative games. A game is a setting in which players strategically interact, so we need players and rules. The delineations of static versus dynamic and complete versus incomplete information games tell us what kind of players and rules we can expect. Static games are games in which players move simultaneously and independently. Games of incomplete information are those in which aspects of the game itself are not common knowledge. We begin our study of static games of incomplete information by considering how to represent such games. We'll begin with the definition of the normal form of a static game of incomplete information. As in static games of complete information, the normal form tells us players and payoff functions. However, in order to introduce incomplete information, the normal form of a static game of incomplete information tells us players' types, actions, and beliefs. The normal form of a static game of incomplete information is the set of players, each player's type space, each player's beliefs about her own and other players' types, each player's action space, and each player's payoff function. Incomplete information enters the game through the types and beliefs. In a game of complete information, each player knows who the other players are. In a game of incomplete information, she knows that each other player is in fact one of several possible types. Player I's payoff function maps the actions of all players and the type of player I to player I's payoff. Now, we'll give two examples of static games of incomplete information. Our first example is a first price sealed bid auction for a single good. Bidders observe the object, each learns how much she thinks it is worth, and then the bidder submits sealed bids. The player with the higher bid wins the object and pays her bid. The other bidder wins nothing and pays nothing. Ties are broken at random. The players are the two bidders. The seller makes no decisions in this game, so the seller is not a player. A player's type is her valuation. From bidder 1's point of view, the salient feature of bidder 2 is bidder 2's valuation, V2. Bidder 1 does not know who she is bidding against in the sense that Bidder 1 does not know Bidder 2's type. However, Player 1 is not completely clueless about who Bidder 2 might be. Bidder 1 knows the distribution of Bidder 2's type. Similarly, Bidder 2 knows the distribution of Bidder 1's type. We'll often use the uniform distribution on the 0-1 interval simply because it is mathematically tractable in many settings. The uniform distribution on 0-1 means that all numbers in the 0-1 interval are equally likely. A bid is an action. Any non-negative bid is permissible. Finally, we come to the payoff functions. If a bidder wins the auction, her payoff is her type less her bid. If she loses, her payoff is zero. Winning depends on her own bid, the other bidder's bid, and her own type. Our second example is Cournot duopoly with one-sided incomplete information. In this version of Cournot's game, Firm 1 has incomplete information about Firm 2's cost. We say the incomplete information is one-sided because Firm 1 has incomplete information about Firm 2, but Firm 2 has complete information about Firm 1. The players are Firms 1 and 2. Firm 1's type space is a single element, C1 equals 10. Firm 2's type space contains 0 and 20. Firm 2 knows its own cost, while Firm 1 believes that C2 equals 0 with probability 1 half and C2 equals 20 with probability 1 half. Each firm's profit function depends on its own cost and the output of both firms. We're going to spend some time now with types and beliefs, since they are the essence of an incomplete information game and much of the equilibrium analysis from this portion of the course hinges on understanding them. 
Incomplete information means there is something about the game itself that is unknown to one or more players. In games of complete information, each player knew the structure of the game itself. We interpret incomplete information as incomplete information about the players. Each of player I's types represents a possible incarnation of player I. Each player knows herself, but is limited to her beliefs about others. In Corneau duopoly with one-sided incomplete information, firm one knows it has a competitor, but it does not know which one. Half the time, firm one plays Corneau duopoly against a competitor with C2 equals zero. The other half of the time, Firm 1 plays Corneau duopoly against a competitor with C2 equals 20. Firm 1 does not know which game it is playing, but it does know the probability distribution of Firm 2's types. In the first price sealed bid auction, neither bidder knows the type of the other. Each bidder knows her own valuation and the distribution of the other bidder's valuation. We can think of types via a small dynamic precursor to a static game of incomplete information. Although we are dealing in static games, game theorists conceive of nature moving first in a dynamic game and drawing each player's type from a probability distribution specified in the game. The information is incomplete in the sense that nature's move is incompletely observed. Each player observes nature's selection of a player's own type, but does not observe the types nature selects for other players. Rather, each player believes that other players' types are distributed according to nature's draw. After nature draws all types, and each player observes her own type, the static game proceeds as described in the normal form. The normal form will seldom, if ever, make mention of this dynamic precursor. The expectation is that you apply it to the beginning of the game yourself. This dynamic sleight of hand lets us carry our definition of strategies from dynamic games of complete information to static games of incomplete information. A strategy is a function from a player's type space to her action space. Our dynamic interpretation of information says that each player observes her own type and then the static portion of the game commences. In other words, each type represents a move of its own. A player's strategy must be a complete plan for each of her moves, so a strategy must associate an action to each type. A player's strategy space is then the collection of all such functions. A strategy in the first price sealed bid auction is not an individual bid, but rather a bidding function. In Corneau duopoly with one-sided incomplete information, firm one chooses a single quantity. Firm one cannot condition Q1 on firm two's cost because firm one does not observe C2. Firm two chooses a quantity to play if C2 equals zero and another if C2 equals 20. Finally, we introduce Bayesian Nash equilibrium we need an equilibrium concept that accounts for the incomplete information aspect of these games. A Bayesian-Nash equilibrium is strategies that form mutual best responses in expectation. Given the strategies of others, each player selects a strategy which maximizes her expected payoff. She may learn information at the end of the game that causes her to regret her action, but at the time she selected her strategy, she did the best she could with the information and beliefs she had. Here are the conditions describing a Bayesian-Nash equilibrium in Corneau duopoly with one-sided incomplete information. Each firm chooses a strategy that maximizes its expected payoff conditional on its information. Thanks so much for watching this video about static games of incomplete information. In the next video, We'll find the Bayesian-Nash equilibrium of Corneau duopoly with one-sided incomplete information.